Here at MD Clutches, we have a basic choice of three friction plates. But before we go into that detail, I want to introduce John, my expert engineer, who's helped me solve a lot of the problems with these clutches. Yes, we certainly have. Now, John, this is an example of what we get in here when it comes to us, first of all. Can you tell me a little bit about what immediately you see wrong with this plate? Well, the first thing I see is that it's only on the uh, uh, gearbox side, it's only worn off the outside of the friction plate, and the inside's hardly done any work, which tells me either the flywheel or the pressure plate is dished or warped. And if you look on the other side, you'll see possible oil contamination, but this one's worn off the inside and not off the outside, and off the outside. So we, we probably have a conflicting issue here with flywheels and pressure plate. So we have to look a lot more than just the friction plate. Yeah. Yep. So John, we're offering people a choice here of three different friction plates. Yeah, that's right. Please explain those a little bit more to people. Okay, well this is, sorry, this is just a, a straightforward organic plate as original equipment uh, with metal backs uh, on the back of the facings and then the rivets holding the metals together rather than the friction material, as good as original equipment. So it's as good as, but yes. I had a problem, of course, with ripping the material off. Yes, you did. In, ex in excessive uh, uh, situations uh, where you don't have a flat flywheel and a flat pressure plate, the clutch plate is only held on the very outside, mm -hmm. so you're not using all the width of the material. The material won't take it, and it'll just rip it off. Yep. But this one doesn't come off? No, it doesn't come off, no. It's Why is that? Because of the bonding. I mean, it's bonded to a metal back. The, the metal actually is the strength. The material will not come off the metal backs because the metal backs are thicker than OE, mm -hmm. and than original equipment, rather. Because the original thick, uh, uh, thicknesses are very, very, very small. We've more yep. than doubled the thickness of the metal. And I see here that the rivets are actually quite deep into the friction material. Why is that? Well, it shows that the rivets never make contact with the flywheel or the pressure plate, and you can obviously imagine the results from that. So because the rivets hold the metal and no friction material, the, the plate will never wear down to the heads of the rivets. So the advantage of this plate is same life expectancy as the original equipment. Sure. When it wears down, it doesn't damage the flywheel or the pressure plate from That's grooving from right. no, rivets. No. And it doesn't rip off because it's bonded on. Correct. That's yeah. absolutely right. So not only original equipment, but a little bit better. Well, I like to think that we, that we do it right, yes. Yeah. That's right. But if people want increased longevity, mm -hmm. we then move on to a Kevlar plate. Yeah. Talk to me about this. That's it, st stuff. It, it stops bullets. <laughs> it does, yeah. What it else does it do? It's originally used in the aeronautical industry to laminate aeroplane wings. Um, it just so happens it happens to be a very good friction material. It has an extremely low coefficient of friction, which means that it needs excess clamping pressure to drive it. But it's very kind to metal, both flywheel and pressure plates, and the life expectancy is, if not two-thirds, to at least 50% more than the original. Yeah. So here we have, it's put on in a similar way to the organic. Yes. But we have a much longer-lasting material yep. that's very keen, and very kind to the surfaces. Very kind to the yeah. surfaces. And it doesn't create any or very little dust. Yeah. Now, you mentioned there, of course, the pressure plate that we need to have for this, that it needs increased clamping pressure. Yes, it does. What are you talking about there? Well, we need to increase the, the amount of pressure that that diaphragm spring holds or squeezes this clutch plate onto the flywheel. And in order to do that, we have to change the, some of this, the, the configuration inside um, to, to get that extra pressure. Okay, so that doesn't affect pr pedal pressure, of course. No, no, no not at all. Um, no. So it feels the same to the driver. Exactly the same. But it just clamps on to that Kevlar tightly. It clamps it tighter. Making sure that it works yep. from the beginning. Something around 20 to 22% extra pressure is required mm. for the Kevlar to work yep. uh, in the right way. But of course, we need to make sure that all the surfaces are flat for this to work properly. Well, it's, it's ideal. Because if you don't, like I said earlier on, you're only going to be working on the very outside of the clutch plate. Whether it be organic um, or Kevlar, it's not an ideal situation. Yeah. We then had requests from racers, circuit racers, yeah. for clutches for their cars. Tell me about these. Yes, well here we've got uh, ceramics, um, which again has an extremely high coefficient of friction, but are very unkind to metal surfaces. Hence. If you use these plates in the race purposes, your flywheel will get very badly marked, and as will your pressure plate, and you would really need to refurbish all three to get back to uh, the right plane again. So when we supply these, we're usually asked for a flywheel yeah. as well as a pressure plate, That's right. uh, all new yep. and all sorted out to yep. 
so that they can take the wear from these hard plates. That's right. Yeah. Lovely material, but wow, yeah. it does a lot of damage. Yeah. And not so good for road use, really just for uh, on track. Yeah, there's, there's, they're very aggressive, you know. I mean, when you, when you t let the pedal out and it bites, it bites. It's, sort of, it's almost like it's in or it's out. Yeah. There, there's, no, there's no feel, you know. It's, it, it's for race purposes. Yeah. So we end up with products like this. Originally, Looking we have like products that. coming in like this. Mm. It's covered in dust that's oil contaminated. Yeah. So we can tell from this exactly what's wrong with the well, car? Well, pretty much, yeah, because you can see most facings when they come, if you look at, the, if you look at this one here, it has uh, grooves in it, dust grooves really is what they are. And if you look at this one here, you can see half the grooves are missing on that side, and if you look on the other side, they're missing on the outside, but the inside has, is still almost original. And if you were to actually physically measure it, you would find the outside has been reduced substantially to the middle, telling it it's only been working on the outside. So we can tell owners here whether they're riding the clutch yeah, too much, sure. whether their flywheel is dished or not, what yeah. condition it's in, mm -hmm. and whether they've got any other problems like oil or grease contamination. Yeah, no problem. That's easy. Yeah.